Hello, my name is Arash Banan and I'm presenting fibrotactile stimulation as a feasible symptomatic treatment for the voice disorder spasmodic dysphonia. Uh, before starting, I'd like to have my disclosure for funding. Spasmodic dysphonia is a voice disorder that, that leads to hoarseness of the voice, voice breaks, tightness, and, and difficulty in speech. Uh, the onset of the disease is during the midlife and it is considered as a rare disease because around 50,000 people in the US, they have spasmodic dysphonia. The cause of ST is unknown and currently there is no cure for it. Early one morning, a man and a woman were ambling along a one mile lane. This was a voice of a patient with spasmodic dysphonia. Current treatment of ST is to reduce the impact of involuntary muscle spasm on voice uh, by injecting the Botox to the laryngeal muscles. Uh, the Botox injection uh, is a, a periodic for every three to six months. It's painful and it is not tolerated by all the patients. And uh, after injecting the Botox, there is a two to three weeks of breathy voice for the patients. Our data shows that ST is is associated with upper limb proprioceptive deficits. Proprioception is uh, defined as um, sensing the body movement and um, position. And after testing uh, people with ST, we found that uh, there is a, a non-voice related sensory de deficit and it shows a generalized somatosensory deficit for these people. This will uh, lead us to maybe a possible new treatment that can alter the sensory information that goes to the brain and uh, that can affect the central processing and as a result it can improve the uh, speech motor. Uh, the idea comes from uh, sensory tricks. Uh, what we believe that happens is that uh, basically the relationship between somatosensory system and motor uh, system will result in uh, voice impairment and our purpose is to uh, simulate the somatic uh, sensory, uh, and as a result, we can restore speech motor function. Our approach to generate the sensory simulation is to use vibration. Uh, there are some studies that has shown that vibration between 40 to 100 hertz activates the muscle spindles uh, and mechanical receptors, and uh, vibrotactile simulation. Uh, basically creates a movement illusion, meaning that if you, let's say, apply a vibrate, uh, vibration around 60 hertz to your uh, arm, uh, without even moving your arm, you feel that your arm is moving. And we are using that uh, to simulate the spindles inside the laryngeal muscles. And as a result, we are trying to alter the afferent proprioceptive signals that goes to the central nervous system. Uh, for our study, we, we recruited 13 patients with spasmodic dysphonia, and our apparatus was a pair of light with encapsulated cylindrical vibrators. Our approach, as I mentioned, is to use the vibrotactile simulation as a non-invasive form of neuromodulation. What we do, we put the vibrators uh, in front of the larynx and we attach them uh, with tape. And what happens is that we simulate the uh, muscle spindles uh, in the laryngeal muscles and this the afferent signal will go up to the somatosensory cortex and will have some effect on the motor cortex and as a result we will have some improvement in the uh, voice quality. Uh, our goal was to look into the short-term effect of the vibration. For that we started with the uh, voice assessment part for which we asked the, uh, the participant to read 10 sentences of adductor and abductor. And then we asked them to vocalize vowels A and E, each of them for three times, each time for four seconds. And we recorded their voice. Then uh, for the intervention for the first set, we had seven minutes of vibration. We only uh, turned on the vibration without any vocalization. Then we asked them to have the vibration uh, and the vocalization at the same time for this task. We asked the participant to vocalize for four seconds. After two seconds of vocalization, uh, while they are vocalizing still, we have uh, we will introduce the vibration and we repeat this for 50 seconds, 50 times. Uh, then we have a post assessment of the voice quality. 
for the VTS and vocalization task, we also measure the EEG recording to see the effect of vibration uh, on the brain signal. We um, repeat this on another set, and then we have um, two minutes of uh, break, and then we have post assessment. To look into the uh, effect of uh, basically the vibration on the voice quality, we use number of voice breaks and also we use a smooth substra peak prominence, which as an acoustic measure of the speech quality. And we uh, introduce three decibel changes of the CPPS, will show some improvement in the voice quality. Here is a voice of a patient before applying the vibration. Tom wants to be in the army. We eat eels every day. He was angry about it all year. Here is the same patient after 34 minutes of the vibration. Tom wants to be in the army. We eat eels every day. He was hungry about it all year. As you can see, uh, there is some sort of improvement in the voice quality of this patient. Overally, 69% of our patients, they had some sort of improvement either in the CPPS value or the number of voice breaks. And our data shows that prolonged barbitacular stimulation improves markers of voice quality in spasmodic dysphonia. We had a set, a set of responders and non-responders, uh, and as you can see for the non-responders, they some of them they started with zero voice breaks that shows that they were less severe in their uh, ST symptoms. Uh, for our system, we used a 64-channel uh, system, and we measured event-related spectral perturbation to see the effect of vibration on the uh, brain signals. We look into six electrodes, uh, one in the somatosensory cortex, one in motor cortex, and one in premotor cortex. And basically we chose a, a location that are close to the speech motor uh, part of the brain. Um, and then uh, we measured the values of uh, frequency values and power of the signal in theta, alpha, beta, and low gamma band. As I mentioned, we used ERSP to measure the effect of VTS on the brain signal. Here we can see a data for one patient. Uh, the y-axis shows the frequency bands, and on, on x we have the time. The colors, uh, if they are toward the more um, uh, warmer colors, shows that synchronization in the brain signal, and if they are toward the colder color, shows desynchronization of the brain signal. Uh, as I mentioned, what in, on x we have time, so we ask the participant to have vocalization. Uh, which is this line, and then after two seconds, we introduce the vibration. We can clearly see that after the vibration on the lower frequency bands, there is a suppression in the amount of uh, brain activity for all the four channels for this uh, patient. Uh, this shows that uh, prolonged vibrotactile stimulation reduces the amount of cortical synchronization activity in theta band. If we quantify the value of ERSP for different uh, frequency bands, uh, this is what we can see. Um, so the top two are after 17 minutes and the lower one um, are after 34 minutes of the vibration. The left one uh, illustrates when the vibration is off. And then when we turn on the vibrator, as for example, for the left hemisphere for CP5, we can see that there is a decrease in the, or suppression in the amount of uh, brain signal for the theta band. Uh, so, we uh, can see that all three electrodes are um, decreasing for the theta band after 17 uh, minutes, but after 34 minutes, only one of them decreases. Also, when we look into the gamma band, which is the higher frequency, more than 30 hertz, uh, we see an increase in, in the amount of uh, uh, basic synchronization. So, we have more synchronization after 17 minutes and also after uh, 34 minutes. And this shows that uh, prolonged vibrotactile dysregulation alters information processing within the uh, speech cortical networks, thus uh, impacts voice quality in spasmodic dysphonia. The next step of our uh, study is to look into the long-term effect of laryngeal VTS on SC, in which we have 11 weeks of intervention, and we have a set of uh, in-lab and in-home training for the patients. Thank you.